This is perhaps the most well-known Masonic symbol, the square and compass. Low-level Masons are told that the G stands for God or geometry, which the great architect used to design the universe, but the real hidden meaning is that it's representative of the sex act, as usual. The letter G stands for generation or generative power. Albert Pike writes in Morals and Dogma that sexual union could be represented by the letter G, the generative principle. This term, generative principle, is code for the sex act. Pike goes on to explain that the compass, therefore, is the hermetic symbol of the creative deity and the square of the productive earth or universe. Therefore, the Masons look at the compass as a male element and the square as the female element, which interact to produce the G in the middle. The square and compass is also an adaptation of the most wicked symbol of all, the hexagram. Historian John J. Robinson reveals in his book, Born in Blood, The Lost Secrets of Freemasonry, that the Mason's compass is nothing more than the satanic hexagram with some key pieces removed. As Robinson points out, the Mason began with a fully formed hexagram and then simply removed the horizontal bar from each interlocking triangle. The upper triangle was then stylized into a compass, while the bottom triangle was made into a square. Finally, he placed a G in the middle to represent the generative force of the male and female together. In this next example, we see they put a sun god in the middle instead of the G. The full hexagram is also used in Freemasonry. Masonic author Albert Mackey tells of the sexual connotation of this hexagram. The triangle pointing downward is a female symbol corresponding to the yoni, and the upward pointing triangle is the male, the lingam. When the two triangles are interlaced, it represents the union of the active and passive forces in nature. It represents the male and female elements. The upward pointing male triangle is represented by light, and the downward facing female triangle is dark. They interlock again with a sexual connotation. These symbols have many layers and nothing is there without great thought and attention. The hexagram also represents the number of the beast, which is 666, because it has six points, six sides, and six angles. Notice also the T, or Tau, within this particular hexagram. T represents Tamuts, the product of the union between the Sun God and Moon Goddess. The little circle on top of the T also turns this symbol into an Ankh cross. The Ankh in occultism is representative of the life-giving power of the Sun. It's also worth highlighting that this male and female, light and dark duality concept has survived in the eastern forms of the Babylonian religion, such as Buddhism. For example, we are probably very familiar with the yin and yang symbol here. In this symbol, the light side of course represents the male aspect and the dark side represents the female aspect. This again is a sexual symbol and it's very commonly used in the world today. This black and white motif is represented another way in Freemasonry through checked floors. This is a suitable way of hiding its true meaning from the profane. Albert Pike said the black and white pavement symbolizes the good and evil principles of the Egyptian and Persian creed. It is the warfare of Michael and Satan, light and shadow, which is darkness, day and night, freedom and despotism. The all-seeing eye, or Lucifer, is behind both Baal and Asherah, which means he's behind both the light and the dark. Good and evil, or light and dark, coming from the same source, is a satanic concept. This next photo is a great example of the double meaning of symbols. Look at the floor and you'll see the black and white checks, but you'll also notice a pentagram. 
An upright pentagram denotes man, Adam and Eve, and this is considered to be the light side. Turn the pentagram upside down, however, and it represents the dark horned goat of Satan, Baphomet. Now look at the photo again. From our viewpoint on this side of the camera, we see the pentagram as upright, which denotes a light organisation working for the good of man. And this is how Freemasons portray themselves in public. They like to point out the good they do in the community. From the perspective of the Masons on the other side of the camera, however, and from their side of the floor, they see something quite different in that symbol. From their side, looking towards us, the pentagram is inverted, which is depicting Baphomet and the real dark agenda of the organisation. What they see is different to what they present to us to see. Occultists of all types will frequently be seen to be very generous in public. They will become involved with charities, donate freely with their time and money, and generally perform acts that will endear themselves to the public. For example, it was widely reported in recent years that Harry Potter author J.K. Rowling was the most generous giver to charity in the whole of Scotland. This invites statements such as, well, if she gives so much to charity, she can't possibly be a bad person. Harry Potter can't be anything to worry about. We have to remember it is always in their best interests to present a light side to the public which draws empathy and trust, but which masks a dark hidden agenda. Freemasons also wear an apron within their lodges, and again we should now easily be able to make sense of the imagery contained on it. But the aprons are in fact double-sided, like this. The light front side is seen openly, but then contrast it with a hidden dark side that is concealed from view. One thing on the surface, another thing in reality. This quote from Masonic author Carl Cloudy sums it all up. Cut through the outer shell and find a meaning. Cut through that meaning and find another. Under it, if you dig deep enough, you may find a third, a fourth. Who shall say how many teachings? In his typically deceptive way, Satan hides meanings within meanings within meanings, so that darkness becomes light and light darkness. His intention is always to lead people away from the truth and towards their destruction. He is a master of deception. Albert Pike in Morals and Dogma cuts to the chase when he exclaims, This idea of seeking the light is an interesting one because it sounds vaguely Christian on the surface. When Masons talk about moving towards the light, however, they're talking about moving towards the so-called illuminating knowledge of Lucifer, which is in fact darkness. You may hear politicians using this light motif from time to time. Alice A. Bailey, one of the most prominent occultists of the 20th century, wrote in her book, The Externalization of the Hierarchy. The Masonic fraternity is the home of the mysteries and the seat of the initiation. It is a far more occult organisation than can be realised and is intended to be the training school for the coming advanced occultists. She then goes on to say, Every Masonic lodge is a temple of religion and its teaching instruction in religion. Masonry is the successor to the mysteries. It can't be made any clearer than that. Alice Bailey, incidentally, was one of the most influential New Agers of the 20th century. Indeed, she invented the term New Age and wrote over 25 books by channeling from a demonic spirit guide. We'll find out more about her later in the United Nations section, but for now we only need to know that she knows what she's talking about when she talks about occult themes. She then goes on to say, there is no question, therefore, that the work to be done in familiarising the general public with the nature of the mysteries is of paramount importance at this time. These mysteries will be restored to outer expression through the medium of the Church and the Masonic fraternity. When the Great One comes with his disciples and initiates, we shall have the restoration of the mysteries and their exoteric presentation as a consequence of the first initiation. Henry R. Evans writes, into Freemasonry have been poured the irradiations of the mystical schools of antiquity. Particularly is this so in the higher degrees of the order, such as the Scottish Rite, where undeniable traces of Kabbalism, Neoplatonism, Rosicrucianism and other mystical cults are plainly discernible. I do personally contend that Freemasonry is the direct descendant of the mysteries, but that our ritual makers of the higher degrees have copied the ancient ceremonies of initiation so far as the knowledge of those ceremonies exists. Anton LaVey, the founder of the Church of Satan, said, 
Masonic orders have contained the most influential men in many governments, and virtually every occult order has many Masonic roots. Now finally watch this clip of a Freemason admitting on camera that he believes Lucifer is the source of light and that he is helping mankind. In particular, note his confusion. Lucifer, what is your problem? Just that, sir. Okay. I'm a Christian, sir. I'm pure and virtuous and wholesome and innocent. How can you say anything about, about me? Sir, you need to be born again. Is I that, am born again. Is that, now, did you just say that you are Lucifer? I am Lucifer. Okay, define Lucifer for me. Pure, virtuous, wholesome, innocent individual that's out to help people. Lucifer is? Yeah. Lu mm -hmm. Say that again. Lucifer is a pure, holy... Virtuous. Virtuous. Now, see the Lucifer that God created? That's the same one. Oh, man, this is great. I'm going to put this on the Internet. Oh, Amen. God bless you, Amen. brother. Because that's exactly what the Shriners and Masons teach, is that Lucifer, Lucifer is light. No. And you're, hey, what you're about confirming those hospitals? It. They, you know, they, they you know what, sir? <clears throat> Jesus said, many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did not, we did not do these good deeds in your name. And you'll say, away from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Jesus said it? In Matthew chapter 5. Mercy. No. That's hard to believe. So, you're a Christian and you don't know that. Actually. No, I really am. You are. Because exactly. I'm pure and virtuous. You're pure and virtuous, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In other words, you're perfect without Jesus, right? No, 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 no. Okay, tell me about Jesus. Who is Jesus? Oh. Well, he's, he's my leader. Is he the Son of God? Yes, he is. Is he the only worshipful master? Yes. Have you ever been called worshipful master? No, because I, I've just been too busy. I've been working. Working. Been working to help people. What like kind you. of work? Okay. Get out of here. <clears throat> See, this is what a Mason confesses: is that Lucifer is light. Have you heard it?